there's a very great level of new money that doesn't know how to live and doesn't really haven't lived the things. They have nothing to bring with them to the job. Okay. And so you have to create a background for them. But as a child, I was always loving everything English. Why decorate it? I actually wanted to be an architect. I studied architecture and decided I really didn't like the math and everything that went along with it. I really liked how the house looked. I didn't care about how it was the structure of it, I really couldn't care less about that. I started collecting when I was 11 years old. I ended up, the first thing I bought was an 18th century writing lap desk. I had no idea what it was, but I knew I loved it. And when I paid for it on a layaway plan after 12 weeks, my father said, uh, why do you want that old thing? I want it in my house, because he didn't like anything that was second hand. He thought it was second hand. Where do you feel the spirit came from? It came from my aunt, my aunt Mary. She had a good eye for it, yeah. But I think I think it's something that you're either um, you're born with it, or it happens when you're young. I think you develop it in the first few years of your life. What was it about objects that had a magnetism for you, and also? than a sculpture, more so than? Oh, well, it was too serious. I like I like more. I love the feeling of an English house, and I think my aunt's, when I went to England the first time in 1961, I was a student, and I remember going through a lot of English houses, and there the great old English country houses you think of, and then there were the little simple cottages. And I think when I came back, and then when I saw Nancy Lancaster's uh, apartment in London, Colfell, that she was yes. a partner of, that great yellow room, that really did it for me. That's what you will think. It's the culmination of a person's life. Everything's it's there. It came from different parts of the world. Inherited, you know, they could have been purchased, they could have been anything. In my case, everything I have, I've inherited nothing, so everything is what I bought. Yes. And you put it together the way you like it. And unfortunately, living in America, living in New York, we have such small spaces that you don't have a chance to do all the things you'd like to do with the things you've collected. So you end up putting them in storage. But it's a sickness, you know, collecting is a sickness. Everything I bought has always reminded me of something I saw someplace, somewhere, at some time. And I think probably the movies are probably the greatest experience you have as a child, to look at movie sets and see the way houses are set up. And I remember my Aunt Mary, we used to go to the movies and sit two and three times until she sketched something, whether it was a curtain, a helmet. There's something exciting about it and owning it. And you own it for only a short amount of time because it's with you for as long as you care to keep it or for your lifetime. And then it goes off to somebody else. So it's really only on loan to you. When did you get into decorating and why? I was 22 when I went to school for architecture. And I hated it, absolutely hated it. And then I got a job, somebody said, you know, why don't you think about decorating? And I never thought of decorating as a man's profession. People frowned at it, they thought about it. But actually the combination of a, a male decorator and a female client is the best, you know. The decorator, the male, gives it the architectural sense, the, you know, the, the foundation, the, the, exactly, the plan. A woman comes in, a client, and she goes and makes it look very cozy, very comfortable. Why has decoration become so serious in America? There's no whip, there's nothing. There's, it's very serious. I mean, I think of certain types that have made a great deal of money in the last 15, 20 years on Wall Street or wherever, and their houses are static. I mean, they don't, you know, they'll collect 25 tortoiseshell boxes and put them on a table. You know, it looks like an antique shop. You know, what is that? What does it mean? There's no sense of history or anything about them. It's all that they bought the right thing. And what, what they've ended up doing basically is their rooms that are very cold rooms, their rooms without any feeling, there's no soul to them. I mean, their apartments, their houses look like a display. The sort of thing I do is just cozy, uh, colorful, comfortable chintz, um, mixed with live plants and whatever. Maybe an animal, a real dog, instead of a painting of one or whatever. You know, but the idea that you have a house that looks like a, a, somebody's home. You really are at home with these people and you're enjoying yourself and they seem to 
like the fact that this does look like it's a reflection of you and what you like. That's what, that's what I try to put into my work. When I try to work with people that have the same feeling for things that I do, and if they like a house that looks like it's been there forever. Um, but what happens if someone doesn't want the English period look? What if they want French period? What if they want well, I can Chinese do, I can, Oriental stuff? I can do other things too, but they don't normally usually come to me. They come to me because they think of me as being a chintzy prince, you know? <laughs> a prince of chintz, chintz. Fortunately, I don't suffer from delusions of uh, grandiosity like I would love to, but I don't. Your look can be in and out of fashion just as easily as Dior or, or, or Right, absolutely, or but you try to keep up you try to keep up the pace of the times and you integrate things that are current today in your work so that your rooms don't look stagnant, they don't look static, but they keep moving. There are decorators who've done certain things who are innovators, who have, who have developed a style, a look, like for example John Fowler, who I'm I think is terrific. But there's nothing new. No, everything's been done under the sun anyway. But what you do is you take what you've seen and you put it together the way you want, your, your special way. Um, I don't think I'm a very innovative designer, but I'm basically always borrowing from the past and trying to use the best of what there is today. When I give a talk, I call it, if you can't hide it, decorate it. And then I say, I go like that. <laughs> Uh, no, this actually, this was, um, this hair belonged to my dog. Really? And when he got a clipping, I got a toupee. Yeah. So, I have bangs, you say, going like that. It's very cute. <laughs>